In 1938, a hotelier by the name of Thomas E. Hull had owned eight different hotels across many different parts of California, including the Hollywood Roosevelt, El Rancho Sacramento, the Hotel Senator, and more. He had envisioned a new western-themed hotel that would not be located within the area of California, but this time all the way out in the Nevada desert. During his meetings talking about his plans, his friends were completely against the idea. Many stated that the area was way too hot for a resort, and that no one would even come to it. But he digressed. He wanted the new resort's signature attraction to be nothing but a cold pool just a few feet away from the highway. At this time, the concept of a casino being added in wasn't added, it was only just a small hotel. At this time, the majority of Las Vegas' hotels, clubs, and casinos were located on Fremont Street. However, the resort hotel would not be located in the city. Instead, it was located outside the city limits on a little two-lane highway, named Highway 91. Wayne McAllister, an architect from Los Angeles, would help building the resort project. It was planned to be a western-themed hotel with 80 rooms that would all be built with a $500,000 budget, which was considered too short according to Hull and McAllister. Later on, an agreement was made that the resort would be a more scaled-down version of the Hull's other hotels, more specifically the El Rancho Hotels. For this, Hull had officially named the resort El Rancho Vegas. Construction on El Rancho Vegas began in 1940 with the Mid-Style Construction Company of Fresno helping to build, along with the Home Loop Company providing cement for them. Construction was pretty fast, and before they knew it, the resort, which now included the casino, would officially open for business on April 3, 1941, at a cost of $425,000. The western-themed casino contained 63 rooms sprawled out in different Yosemite-style cabins surrounding the casino, a nightclub, a cafe, and even stables that allowed people to do horseback riding. All of this was combined with a promenade that was referred to as the Village. The casino's exterior contained a large spinning neon windmill designed by the Nevada Electric Company, along with wooden fences running along the sides. That, and a pool located in front of the resort, a concept that was featured in the original concept itself. The resort featured the Roundup Room, which originally started off as a restaurant cafe but would soon become a full-on showroom, home of El Rancho's Dice Girls and the El Rancho Starlets, showgirls who would perform daily on the stage. Along with that was the Chuck Wagon Buffet, the first buffet in Las Vegas. The resort also featured badminton courts, various lawns, dinner dancing, and outdoor barbecues. Later on, 47 more hotel rooms were added. El Rancho was a major success. Locals and tourists favored its luxury and attractions being comparable to the hotels and casinos along Fremont Street, despite being so far away from downtown. Note that El Rancho Vegas wasn't technically the first casino on the Strip. That goes to Paradise, which opened back in 1936 and later closed to make way for the last frontier. Only a year later in 1942, a large amount of problems began taking over the resort, thus causing constant layoffs of its staff including 13 managers in just its first three years. On the same year later, Thomas Hull sold the El Rancho Vegas to Joe Drown, which would then start up buying war, ending with future casino owner Wilbur Clark owning the property in 1945, along with leasing the casino. Throughout the 1940s, the resort would undergo several different owners, including being sold to Walter Gazzardi, a Los Angeles businessman, for over $1 million in September of 1945. Belden Kaleman, an American businessman, had begun owning the El Rancho Vegas for the rest of its lifetime. This was after a lawsuit that was being held between Wilbur Clark and Joe Drown on the same year. In 1947, Las Vegas' newest resort and casino, the Flamingo, had opened. Kaleman had noted that more people had already visited the hotel than the El Rancho itself. So for this, the resort began its first renovation. In this, the western-themed interior was replaced with a French provincial ambience with a mix of modern theming. Along with that, the Roundup Room was renamed to the Opera House, with a new design made by Thomas Douglas. A new restaurant with 24-hour stage door steakhouse was added, along with a shopping center that contained a beauty salon, barber shop, a gift shop, and more. A bunch of new hotel rooms were also added, adding the room count to 220, all of this costing over $750,000. In 1950, a giant new neon sign was added that would be designed by Yesco, replacing the original one. Several years later, in 1957, the El Rancho Vegas would become the home of American singer Shirley Bassey's stage debut. 
along with the marriage of Paul Newman and Joanna Woodward a year later in 1958. Throughout the El Rancho's lifetime, they also sold stars such as Joe E. Lewis, Eartha Kitt, Jane Russell, Gloria De Haven, and more. On June 17, 1960, during the evening, while Betty Grable and Harry James were performing inside the casino's cocktail lounge, Grable noticed that part of the area had been caught on fire. By the time they had run out of the resort 20 minutes later, the majority of the casino, buffet, opera house, and several other areas of the casino had been set ablaze, flames erupting 100 feet into the sky. The fire destroyed almost the entirety of the resort, with no one killed or injured. It was unknown what had started the fire. However, Kaleman himself said that an unknown mobster from Chicago had started it, and thus he was blacklisted from ever entering the now burnt down hotel. After the horrific fire, Kaleman had announced that he would be building an all new six story, 1000 room resort with the El Rancho Vegas previously occupied, and would be finished by the beginning of 1964. However, this idea was quickly shot down due to architects being concerned with how it would turn out. Later on, Kaleman had officially retired from the casino industry, moving to Los Angeles and later dying on September 28, 1988. Despite the fire destroying the majority of the casino, the remaining part of the hotel was used as a small motor lodge called the El Rancho Vegas Motor Inn, and reopening in 1964, fully being owned by a company named Alfred Hotels Incorporated. The problem with this place, however, was that it struggled to stay open without a casino, and thus, it would permanently close in 1970, becoming vacant for the rest of the decade. So what happened to the area after the property was demolished? Well, nothing much except for a few cancelled projects throughout the rest of the 20th century. In 2000, Hilton had announced that it would be building a new 1,500 room hotel that would be located where the El Rancho Vegas had previously been. Groundbreaking occurred on June 14, 2001, and eventually what is now known as the Hilton Grand Vacations Club opened on February 4, 2004. The place can still be seen to this day. El Rancho Vegas holds a special place in the history of Las Vegas. Being the first hotel and casino on the highway, it managed to begin the rise of the Las Vegas Strip and its many amenities. All this, just for a fire to practically destroy the dreams of this wonderful place. Its legacy lives on though, and its uniqueness and western approach brought in the customers, and it's no wonder why this place had attracted it.